Hello class, welcome to lab number three, using Ubuntu. The goal of this lab is for us to lose a little bit of fear of playing around with the system. So we're gonna be using the system overall, doing a couple of basic things, and then we're gonna do a couple of advanced stuff. Uh, well, or at least advanced to the degree that we are right now. So, before you start this lab, make sure you complete lab one and two, and then you do lab number three. Without lab number two, it would be impossible for you to, to do lab number three. And because we're gonna be using Markdown in this uh, lab as well, in the end, you will need to complete lab one as well. That's how all the labs are going to be. One builds upon the knowledge of the other. Um, make sure you download this cheat sheet called software installation cheat sheet it's going to be very useful to you all you have to do is click on the here button and it's going to be in your downloads folder and we're going to move that so i'm going to open a folder over here there you go let's minimize that this is my downloads bottom my downloads folder this we're going to move it to our cis repository so i'm not right clicking home opening a new window so that you can see and this is my repository so what, the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to push this as a bookmark over here so that I can find it quicker anytime I want to go in there. And over here, we're going to create a new folder called Cheat Sheets. And then we're going to drag and drop the file here. Throughout the semester, I'm going to be giving you more cheat sheets. You can store them over there. We can close that. We can close that. And let's continue. The video for this uh, presentation is available over here. That video was made when the class was online. Um, it's, it got more in detail on, in, on the software installation. And the presentation is also available over here in case you wanna reread it, although I know we went over it probably during class. The three main things you need to remember is how to install software, remove software, and look for software. The other stuff, you will get more used to them as you use them in the future. But those three things are very important to remember. With that said, let's get started with question number one, doing some basic stuff in Ubuntu. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the screenshot application that we're gonna be using for the class called Flameshot. And for that, we're gonna open a terminal here. Here, we're gonna type the date command. Let me make this a little bigger. Date. And as you can see, it's a command that tells you the date. That's all it does. To take a screenshot, we can look for the application called Flameshot And this is gonna open an icon over here. You can click on that icon and click on take a screenshot. And now we can take a screenshot. Or you can press the print the screen key on your keyboard and it will launch the same application. It's the little shortcut that we added when we were doing lab number two. Now I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna do some annotations to this. So let me make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna call this over here. This is the command. Oops, sorry. I escaped by mistake. Oh, by the way, if you want to exit that, just press the escape key on your keyboard. Okay, so we are going to highlight this. I'm also going to highlight this. And let me do a little arrow over here, a little arrow over there. And let's put a couple of text here. I'm going to call this, this is the output of the command. Then here I'm gonna type here, this is the command. Perfect. Now I'm gonna click on save. I'm gonna go to CIS 106, labs, and in here we don't have a folder for lab three, so we need to create it. So click on the create icon on the corner and name it lab three. All the files for lab three are gonna be stored over here. This is screenshot, we're gonna call it date command png. And then we're gonna click on save. Make sure that you're inside lab number three and that you have named the file correctly and then click on save. We don't need the terminal open and we close it. Notice that I try to keep no more than two applications open while I'm working on my virtual machine. You need to be cheap with the applications that you open because don't forget, this computer has only two gigabytes of RAM and a dual core CPU, so it's not very powerful. So try to be smart about how many applications you open. If you don't need it, close it. Now we're gonna create a desktop shortcut for our website, right? We're gonna create it right over here so that we can just double click and it launches our site. So the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna open a text editor. So we are gonna click over here, 
and we're gonna look for the word text. This is our text editor. Over here, we are gonna copy all of these guys and we're gonna paste it right over here. Now, we're gonna click, you see where it says home? We're gonna delete that. We don't want that. We're gonna put the full path where this image is stored. First, we are gonna download the image to get this little image here. As you can see on the video, all we have to do is go to the home page of our site, right click and click on save image as. Over here, we're gonna place it inside the home directory and we're gonna call it period cis106.png. Again, starts with a period, then cis106.png. It starts with a period because this is a hidden file. So we're gonna click on save. And now, over here, we're gonna put the location of this image. This image is inside our home directory. So it's gonna start with forward slash, home, forward slash, and then there we put our username. If you don't know your username, you can open a terminal, and this over here is your username. Mine is RA Alberto. So I'm gonna type RA Alberto. I'm gonna close that terminal, I don't need it. Now we're gonna click on save, and we're gonna place this file inside the desktop folder. So we're gonna click on desktop, and we're gonna name this cis 106 that desktop. Let's click on save and we're gonna have this little guy over here with a little X in the corner. That's expected. We can close that and now we're gonna allow executing. You can either right click and click on allow launching or you can click on properties and click on execute file as program. So we're gonna right click and click on allow executing and now every time we double click this icon it takes us straight to the website of the course. I suggest you practice this with other websites that you wanna have on your desktop just for the sake of practicing. Now we're gonna write a document. Now, to write a document, we use this application, LibreOffice Writer. It's an office suite that comes included with Ubuntu and pretty much every Linux distribution out there. Uh, did you know, blah, 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 yes, I knew. You feel free to explore this application as you desire. For now, we're just gonna type a, a document over here so what I'm gonna do is look for Linux Wikipedia here and let's pretend I'm you know writing about Linux so I'm gonna type here Linux I'm gonna make this uh, title title of the document and insert can I insert a line no an object formula none of that yeah it probably is an option for inserting a line right over here, I like to put a line over here just for the sake of it, it's nice, no, let's make this a little bit bigger, that's good, it would be nice to change this to blue as well, okay, okay, now over here we are going to put some information about Linux, paste that over there, it doesn't really matter. Let's copy this image, why not? Let's put it in here. That's good. And that's good enough. So I'm gonna click on File, Save As, and this allows me to save the document as any of the formats that we see over here. For example, if you wanna save it as a uh, an Office document, right, Microsoft Office, you can check Office 2007 to 365, docx right over here, Word 2007 to 365, and now this is a Word document. I'm gonna place it over here inside Labs, Lab 3, and I'm gonna name this Linux. I'm gonna save it, and yes, I wanna use Office format because I'm gonna be saving, sending this to somebody that only has Microsoft Office, we can close that. Now, if I wanna convert this file to PDF, we can just simply click over here and then click on export. Sorry, not export. There is an actual option for that. Export as, export as PDF. Export, and we're gonna save it in the same place. Click on save. And that's it. Feel free to play around with LibreOffice as you desire. Feel free to, to, write, to write an essay in it. That, that shall be fun. 
Okay, next we are gonna create a presentation. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna click on LibreOffice Libre and we're gonna open Impress. And we're gonna choose Blueprint Plants, that's fine. And we're gonna call this one Ubuntu. Okay, or I can see Ubuntu Linux. All right, and here we can just, uh, yeah, why not? Let's just put some dummy text here. Why not? Ubuntu Linux. And here we are going to search for Ubuntu. Let's just get it directly from Wikipedia. Why not? Let's copy this. Paste it right here. And here. Let's copy this image, paste it over here. Oops, sorry. Save the image as. Let's call this Ubuntu. And we're not putting it inside our labs folder, lab number three, and save. Then insert image. And we're gonna look for the image that's inside CIS 106, labs, lab three, and it's called Ubuntu.png. Click on open, let's make it a little bigger. And that's fine, we can save this. So I'm gonna click on file, save as, CIS 106, labs, lab three. And we're gonna call this Ubuntu presentation. And again, we can save as ODP, ODF, or we can save it as PowerPoint 2007 365 and that's gonna be a presentation that you can send somebody that has Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office and they'll be able to edit this file with no problem. Now if we want to export this file we can do that as well. We can export as PDF, no problem. We're not gonna do that, we're just gonna close this. Next we are going to play around with the settings of Ubuntu. A couple of things we want to do in there that are fun. All right, so to open the settings, we can just click over here and click on settings, or we can search it as an application over here. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna change this background here. So when you click on background, you can choose any of the predefined sets over here. That's how it looks, it doesn't look bad, but you can also add your own image. So how about we do that? So we're gonna go to this website over here, Wall, wall Heaven, and we're gonna look for a wallpaper we like. I like that one, so I'm gonna use this one. Save image as and we're gonna put it in lab number three, that's great, and we're gonna click on save. Then over here, we're gonna click on add picture, CIS 106, labs, lab three, and then wall heaven. Click on open, select the image, and voila, you have successfully added your image. Next, we're gonna play around with the appearance of Ubuntu, right over here. So. I'm gonna open a file manager over here so that you see the changes as they happen live. First, I like dark theme. I'm a, I'm a sucker for dark theme, so that's the first thing I'm going to enable. Then I prefer blue as my accent color or purple. Purple is nice. This purple is better. But I'm gonna stick to blue for now. We can change the size of the desktop icon. I, I, well, I like mine small. As you can see, the size now decreased to a small. And now we can say, where do you want these icons to appear as they become available? I want them on the top left. I like them over here in the corner. I don't like this folder over here because I can always access this through here. So this to me makes no sense. So I'm just gonna delete, I'm just gonna hide it. Now the dock, this is the dock. How do you want it? Do you want it to hide automatically? Not really. If you click on hide automatically, it will just hide whenever it's not in use. I don't like that. I want to keep it there. Panel mode. I don't like panel mode. Panel mode is go all the way from the top to the bottom or from corner to corner. I like it like this in dock mode. Then size of the icon. Uh, a little bit smaller. That's good enough. And then which display. I only have one monitor so primary display is fine. Position of the screen. I want it in the button right over here in the button. That's what I have it on my Mac. That's what I have it everywhere. So I want it over here. And then in the dock behavior See, show volumes and devices. I don't want this. Don't show me the flash drives when I connect them. Don't show me the CDs when I insert them. I don't need them here. If I want them, I go to the file, to, 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 
I go to the location where they are. I don't want them here. If you want them, you can turn it on. Show trash. You can either turn it on or off. I like it there, so I'm going to keep it there. And that's about it. Later on, we're going to see how we can do even more customizations to its appearance. But for now, that's good enough. I'm going to close this. And now you're going to play around with the notifications right over here. Like Do whatever you want here, but I prefer no notifications at all. Just don't show me notifications. You can show them to me on the lock screen, but I don't want notifications otherwise. See the little little bell over there? I want it. Then disable search um, over here. Search. You can disable search completely. So when you search over here, the only thing that will search is for applications that are named like that. For example, Impress. If you turn this on, not only will it search for applications called Impress, but it also searches files with that name. It also searches characters with a name and things like that. You can do what I do. I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that. I, I want this and I want this. That's the only thing I want you to show me when I search for stuff. I don't want anything else. For example, there is an application called Pic that allows me to record videos on my computer. When I type Pic, it's not installed on my system, so it doesn't appear as an application available, but it appears in software. And I can just click here and it will take me to software. Now that feature I prefer, but nothing else. If you want to turn them off completely, you can go ahead and turn it off completely. Multitasking. Hat corners means that if you click on the little corner over here, it opens a multitasking window. That's useless to me on a virtual machine, so I don't turn it on. If you want it on, you can turn it on. And then active edges is this. You drag and drop something to the corner and it just it takes half of the screen. I use that a lot, so I'm going to keep it. And yeah, you can play around with the rest if you like. These are settings for applications specifically. By all means, feel free to play around with that as well. Uh, these are if you want to connect any of your online accounts. This is a virtual machine. I have no need to do that. And here is for privacy. Do you want to turn on uh, location tracking, you know, and things like that? By, by all means, you can go ahead and play around with that. Next, uh, sharing. If you want to enable a share folder between your computer and whatever other computer in your network, this is where you do it. We're going to play around with that later on in the course. You can play around with sound over here, but this virtual machine has no uh, sound card installed because I specifically disabled it. So there's nothing that we do over here will do anything. And then in power, you know, one thing that I change is this. I like it to never, just never turn off. That's fine for me. If you want to play around with the display, this is where you do, you know, we change the, the resolution of the screen, change the orientation of the screen and things like that. Settings for mouse and trackpad are located over here. I never play around with the mouse speed because I, I, I like the way it is and I can always change the speed of my mouse mechanically with a button in the mouse. But you can always play around with this over here. Keyboard, you can add and remove keyboards over here. One thing that I do is that I add a uh, since I speak multiple languages, I like to add other languages here just in case I need it. And now I can simply switch on here any language on my keyboard. If I want to type in English, I click English. If I want to type in Russian, I click Russian over here. Right? The same thing goes if you want to add a third language as well. For example, French, right? French. You want to type in French, you can add French over there. And it also has different keyword layouts as well. Next. You want to add printers, this is where you do it. Remove all media, what to do when you plug them, you do it here. Color calibration of your screen, you do it over here. Change the language of your computer, you do it over here. Accessibility, these are all the accessibility settings that are available for your system. Users, you want to add another account, this is where you do it. We are going to do it here and we're going to do it in the command line as we get towards the end of the semester. If you want to change the default applications, you can do it over here. For video, I prefer VLC, so I'm going to change it to VLC. And then for music, I don't want the videos application, I want Rhythmbox. For calendar, I don't have I don't have another calendar application. I don't use Thunderbird, but if I were to have another mail client, this is where I will change it. This is where we have date and time configuration, and here we have nice little menus, not a menu, but you know, a little window telling us information about our system. Notice one gig of two gigs of RAM, you know, hardware model. This is a virtual machine. As you can see here, it says virtualization Oracle, and so and so and so. Okay, that concludes the section on playing around with the settings of our system. Next, we're going to install a font. 
Now, installing a font is pretty easy, and uh, for that, I'm gonna go to Google Fonts, Google Fonts, and let's pick a font from here. Let's say, uh, okay, MS Matty. This is an interesting font. We're gonna choose that. Download font family. We're gonna open the file here, and I'm just gonna extract the file. Right click, extract here. And there we go, we're gonna open here, and all you have to do is double click the font file. Click on install, and your font is gonna be available in your system. If you wanna test it, we can open LibreOffice. LibreOffice Writer. And we're gonna type here, hey there, I love Ubuntu. Select and then we're gonna search for MS Maggie. And as you can see, my font has been successfully installed. I'm gonna close this because we don't need it. Done save. Close. You should go ahead and install a couple of more fonts. Now, this question requires no screenshot. I you don't need to give me anything for this question. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna trust that you went ahead and you practiced like I did over here. Question number two, we're gonna use a different desktop environment this time, right? This is something we're gonna go more in depth, uh, I believe next lecture, uh, or I think we already covered it anyway. Different desktop environment, so let's play around. I think we covered it already, so. By the way, I'm recording this video ahead of time, so I don't know if we'll get to cover it during our lecture, so I apologize. And yeah, we're gonna cover, explore desktop environment, so it would be nice for us to Install a new desktop environment, see how it looks. For that, we're gonna install the old version of GNOME because it's faster and because it's good to have an alternative. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna open a terminal and we're just gonna paste it here. This is the this is the command that's gonna install the desktop environment for us. So we're gonna click here, enter, and I'm gonna go grab a coffee. Meanwhile, this works, you should do the same. Okay, so the installation is complete. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch desktop environments. Pay attention to how different it's going to look like. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna click on power off, log out, log out. Click on your username but then click on the little gear icon over here in the bottom right corner and click on Gnome Flashback Metacity. Click on type your password. And there you go. This is how different looks. This is how Ubuntu used to look like a long time ago when I started using it. I really like this interface over the other one because it's faster. But you don't have to use it, you can always go back to the previous one. Let's take a look. Click on the little PC icon on the top, click on log out, log out. Your username, click on the GRS icon, click on Ubuntu on XOR, and then type PCCC. Well, I type PCCC because that's the password of this dummy account that I created on this virtual machine as it is for all the videos. You type your own password, obviously. Hope you didn't choose that one. That's a lame one. Okay. Let's continue working on this. It is normal for me to, in other videos, for instance, use the older version of GNOME because it's faster, but I, 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 I go back and forth, it doesn't really matter. Now, take a screenshot of your Ubuntu system. Now, I suggest you do this this point okay for some reason it doesn't want to just doesn't want to work okay that's weird I'm just gonna restart the computer it's a good opportunity to see a new, to see a new command if you want to restart your computer you can just type restart in the command line that works. You can also do tel init 6, which we're going to explore later on. And we can also restart your computer, and I prefer that one.
So give it a second until the computer comes back online. I will continue using the classic version for the rest of the video so that you see how different it looks like, considering that you already saw how the regular Ubuntu with GNOME 42 looks like. So I'm gonna type PCCC here and I'm gonna go back Metacity and enter. Okay, perfect. So what I want you to do now is open this, then maybe open a terminal, applications, accessories, no, nope, we're gonna go to system tools, terminal, and let's take a screenshot of our desktop, right? We're gonna take the screenshot of the whole thing, and we're gonna save it. We're gonna call this question two. We're gonna put it in lab number two, and click on save. And that's it, we have completed question number two. I'm gonna, back, I'm gonna go back and open the website. We don't need that open, we don't need that open either. And there you go. The applications that you have open are gonna load over here in this bar that we have in the bottom. So make sure that you always look in the bottom when you're looking for which applications are open. I'm gonna close this and go all the way down to lab number three. Okay. So let's continue with question number three. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So for question number three, we are going to start working around with the commands for installing and removing software. So using the command line, look for a software that can do each and every one of these tasks. Then fill in the table with the information that you find about the command. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this first. I'm gonna open VS Code. Do, 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 do. Open Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna put VS Code in one corner and I'm gonna put the other stuff in the other corner. Make sure that you have your folder open. Make sure that here it says CIS106 at your folder, make sure. And now I'm gonna click on Lab3 and I'm gonna click on New File. I'm gonna call this Lab3.md for Markdown and then I'm simply gonna get started. I'm gonna click on name, your name goes here, your name goes here, and then here, semester fall 22. And then we're gonna put a title called lab three submission. Then here, question one, has no submission. But if you wanna put the picture that you took over here when you were doing question number one, you're welcome to do so. For example, the date picture. You can do that, but you know, again, I don't require that, so it's up to you. Now we're gonna do question number two. And here, we're just gonna paste the table that we have. Make sure to leave one space before, one space after, and right click and click on format. We're good. So the first thing we need to find is a game, is a program that we can use to play Tetris, right? It's a game, a game called Tetris, right? I'm pretty sure everybody in the class knows what Tetris is. It's the old, that old school blocks video game, right? So what command can we use to look for files? And at this point, you know, if you don't remember, you can open a text, you can open a, a file manager, go inside cheat sheets and open your workshop, your um, cheat sheets for Italian software. Now for li listing software, we use APT list. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for software. So for search for a software, we do APT search and then the name of the software that we're looking for over here or the key phrase that we're looking for here. So we're gonna open a terminal Applications, system tool, terminal. Okay. Let's put it on the corner over here. And we're looking for APT search. We're looking for a program we can use to play Tetris. What is it that we want to do? We want to play Tetris. So the keyword that I'm looking for over here is play Tetris. I'm gonna try this first and see what comes up with that. I got nothing. So I'm gonna try a single word. All right, let's say just the word Tetris. What do we get? We get a lot of results. So let's go over them slowly. So, go over here, Bastet, and Courses Tetris clone with the Bastard algorithm. You know, that seems 
seems useful it seems like seems like a tetris game block stack block attack puzzle game inspired by tetris i like this one this is more likely than i'm looking for if i were to play tetris like i'm looking for a tetris game you know these two descriptions over here seems to be more likely what i'm looking for so if i'm going to start a program i would rather install the, any of these two to see which one of them you know is the one that i really want to play and how did i find out i searched the application using the word tetris and i read the output so play tetris play a tetris game what do we want we want the package name the package name is this here this is what we're going to use to install the package right so the one i want to install is called block attack so i'm going to copy that and i'm just going to paste it over here next what version will i be installing if i choose to install this i will be installing version jammy version 2.701 this is because it's from the jammy repositories from ubuntu the code name for this version of ubuntu is jammy jellyfish right and this over here will be the version and the and the this processor for it so this is version 2.7 for a 64-bit processor so i'm going to click on copy and i'm going to paste this over here paste i'm going to format this and beautiful next play a video file right i'm going to do that one as well for you i'm going to leave play music and read your email for you to do and i will do this too for you so this two you'll do on your own this two i will do for you as well so we can practice more so let me put this in the side here now i'm going to clear my screen and for that i'm going to just press enter and type the word clear and this will clear my work environment my terminal perfect now we need a program that allows us to play a file so what type of program can allow me to play a file well what type of program goes on the internet a web browser what type of program reads email an email reader what type of program play video a video player so that's what i'm going to be looking for apt search video player and then I'm going to read the, uh, the output to see which one of these can actually be a program and not a library because don't remember, you can also have libraries over here. Pretty much anything that matches that description will appear over here. But I want a program that can play videos, so a video player. AView, a high quality ASCII art image viewer and video player. Look, this is a video player, right? So this works. Let's see what else. CC Live, Lightway command line video extraction tool. So this is not really this isn't really a video player. So this I'm not gonna I'm not gonna choose this. Commercial detector. I don't even know why it appeared by that search. It's clearly not what I'm looking for, but that doesn't work for me. How about this one? Simple video player, dragon player. That's what I'm looking for. That will allow me to just play a video. So I am going to use this one for a solution. The name is Dragon Player. Dragon Player. And the command will, and sorry, and the version will be 4 colon uh, 21.12.3 0 Ubuntu AMD 64. I'm going to right click and format my document, and we're good to go. Now, to browse the internet. What kind of program can I use to browse the internet? Well, a web browser, like Google Chrome, like Firefox, Epiphany, and so more. So, I'm going to clear my screen again, APT search, and then here I'm gonna type for web browser. Oops, sorry, APT search, better. And I have a bunch of stuff again. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go over to the top and I start reading what I get until I found what I'm looking for, right? So, world best email client. That doesn't work. I'm looking for a web browser, not an email client. A key aggregator, RSS atom feed aggregator. That doesn't work for me. Web browser, yay. Web browser based IRC client. Ah, oh, this is an IRC client. I want a web browser. That doesn't work for me. Links handling support for GNOME web browser. That, that's, that's a library. That doesn't work for me. Web browser for Plasma Mobile. Well, this, this is sort of what I'm looking for, right? This is a web browser. It's for something specific, but this works for me. You know, you could pick this one, but let's see what else we get. 
say here that doesn't work for me doesn't work for me doesn't work for me doesn't work no no not really how about this one epiphany browser intuitive gnome web browser this works for me so i'm gonna pick this because this does what i'm looking for it's a web browser so i'm gonna choose this one for installation okay so what's the name of the browser this one epiphany browser there are more options over there as well so just just so you know you don't have to pick exactly what i pick you know you can just use the logic that i'm using to find what i'm looking for and then copy it for you next here it's this version this is the version that we want for this right over here version 42 here make sure it's in a single line and format document now I'll let you do this one and I'll let you do this one you work on that one as a practice for yourself and again the key about this stuff is practice 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 so you should practice with other stuff like play a video game or, or you know things like that just use these commands people the, the only way to get good at it is by using them a lot let's minimize that and let's see here is a challenge for you if you were to install all the programs here the ones that I found and the ones that you found what command are you going to use you need to give me the exact command that you will use don't give me the oh I will use apt install no the command that you use to install them in your computer and you have to install them in your computer tell me what command you're going to use and you have to use one single command so you have to install all the packages in one single command Give that a try. If you were to remove them all in one single command, how would you do it? And if you were to install a couple and remove a couple, how would you do it again in a single command? That's a challenge for you. The information for this can be found in the presentation or in the cheat sheet. Give it a shot. After you complete this, all you have to do is give me the table. That's it. And give me the answer to this question. So you should copy this, put it over here, copy this, put it over here and copy this and put it over here which command did you use to install which command did you use to remove and which command did you use to install install and remove and remove All right and let's do a little bit formatting over here Okay, perfect. Question number four, and this is a challenge question as well, but we're gonna do a couple of things before we go to the challenge. Now, see, it's impossible to know all the commands. You're not gonna know them all. You're gonna forget some. And in some, you will forget how to use them too. This is why Linux come equipped with a beautiful command called man, which is short for manual. It allows you to read the manual of a command. For example, oops, sorry over here. For example, if you want to read the manual page of the command date that we saw earlier, you will type man space and then the name of the command, date. It will open the manual page for date. You can read this by using the arrow keys to move up and down, left or right. You can use the space bar to jump to the next page you can also press the H key to open the help menu that will tell you what each key on your keyboard can do for you to help you and you can press quit to quit when you're done reading see Q and it quits short for quit again man and then the name of the command like date opens the manual page of the command it tells you what the commands is for how to use it like the formula to use it it gives you an in-depth description of the command and then it starts telling you hey you can use the option for example minus d which will display as a string debug f r and so on and so on and so on so i'm going to press q over here we're going to learn more of the man command as we move on in the, in the in the course but what we want to do now is 
we are gonna try these commands in the terminal, right? We're gonna try these commands. We already know what date does. What does free h do? do? So we're gonna do free minus h. And as you can see, it throws some stuff over here. But if I wanna know what the command is for, I can just type man free. And here it tells me this command free is used for displaying the amount of free and used memory in my system. So my system in total has two gigabytes of RAM, 1.9 to be specific, is currently using 1.9 and it only has 65 megabytes available. 174 is share, 751 is cache, 842 available. Let's play around with the other stuff. So how about uname minus a? What does this command do? So let's type, let's type it out, uname minus a. And it throws a bunch of information there that we don't think, it just doesn't make any sense right now, does it? So let's do man uname and see what it does. Oh, it prints system information. And we have a bunch of options over here. For example, if we wanna print what kernel version our computer is running or the name of the computer. So how about we do, hey, you name, give me the kernel version and give me the name of my computer. And it's gonna print the kernel version and it's gonna print, print the name of my machine, sorry, the machine architecture, which is x86-64. Let's see what other options the you name command has. Shows me the processor, hardware platform, right? It tells me the operating system. Let's try that one out. So we're gonna do you name minus, let's see what was the, the option again. I forgot my mistake. O. So let's do U name minus O. And we're using GNU slash Linux. Richard Stallman shall be proud. Okay. I'll let you do this one on your own. DU slash H. Now, you don't have to type all of this stuff out. This is just for practice. What I want you to do is install these programs over here. Once you install them, run these commands. Then, I want you to use the man page to tell me what each and every one of these commands do. So we're gonna copy this. Let's put over here question, I think this is question what? Question four, because question number three was, uh, da, 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 what was question number two? Question number two, we didn't put the screenshot for question number two, we'll fix that now. Let's do question four, because this is in reality question number three. And here in question number four, we're gonna copy this, sorry, and paste that over here. And there you're gonna give me a very short description of what the command does. I'm gonna do the first one for you. So I'm gonna do man echo, as a matter of fact, man echo, press enter. This command simply displays a line of text, right? For example, echo, hi, how are you? And it's gonna display, hi, how are you, to the screen. So I'm gonna type here that what the command does is displays a line of text. Let's format this, and we're done. Do the, do, the same, do the same for the other commands, figure out what the command does using the manual page and playing around with the command, place it over there and you get your grade. Once you're done with all this, we are going to right click and we're gonna convert this to PDF. So we're going to export to PDF. Oops, sorry. See, mark down file, name lab3. You also need the PDF version, submit the URL, the URL for uh, lab3 and the PDF version of lab3, perfect. So we are gonna close that and we go to pccc.edu. I don't want to apply, I already graduated.
And guess what? I don't remember my password. But isn't that why we have password managers for? Right? Come on, sign in. Meanwhile, that's signing in. I can work. We can work on this. So notice that we have our lab three PDF over here. Beautiful. I missed uh, question number two, so we're gonna fix that right now. Question number two. Question number two. And this is Q two. Q two. Okay, now let's convert this to PDF again. It should replace the file we already have there. And this is taking three days and a trip to the moon. Perfect, now we're gonna send this information to GitHub. So we're gonna do git add period, right? And then git commit minus M lab three done it sent everything there now we're gonna send that so git push could not wait for remote repository permission denied public key. oh that's not bueno that's not bueno that's not bueno I deleted my key for this repository online okay let me fix this real quick oh, okay I fixed it already. The problem was that I deleted the old key that I had in there and I forgot to import the new SSH key. That's fixed. Everything is in there already. So if we go to github.com and we go to our repository here, we have labs, lab3, and lab3 that and D. So you need to give me this URL over here, right? So don't forget to give me this URL. And we're gonna go to, 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 to Linux Fundamentals, Labs, Lab number three. And then here, you're gonna give me write submission. The URL to your, to, to your file, specifically to the lab 3 md file and then you're gonna browse local files and you're gonna give me the PDF version of your lab3 file. Lab3 PDF. And you have completed your lab number three. I'll see you next week. Now we are gonna close this. We don't need that, we don't need that. We are going to turn this computer off. Shut down, shut down.